strain wave mounts due to their high payload to weight ratio their portability and the fact that you don't need to use a counterweight with most imaging systems is quickly making these the choice mount for astrophotographers skywatcher has just released a new line of strain wave mounts that could very well possibly be the next best upgrade from your traditional equatorial mount so i present to you the skywatcher wave 100i and 150i I'm Tegan with High Point. Like this video, subscribe, and stay tuned. So there are a few differences that set these two mounts apart from one another. Their size and their weight are very similar, but the 100i has a couple of features that the 150i does not, and vice versa. Let's take a quick look into what both of these mounts really have to offer. We're going to start off with the 100i. The Skywatcher Wave 100i weighs in at only 9.5 pounds and it hauls an impressive 22 pounds without a counterweight and 33 pounds with the optional counterweight set. On the front of the RA housing, you have the standard hand controller port if you like to control your mount via the hand controller, but they also include a USB port for computer or PC control. The Wave 100i also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity for controlling the mount from the Skywatcher app. And lastly, a cool feature about this mount is that it comes with an extra dovetail allowing you to set up two scopes in a dual saddle configuration. So this is great for dual mounting visual setups in alt azimuth mode or dual mounting two astrophotography systems in equatorial mode. Let's move on to the 150i. So this is the mount that we consider to be the best upgrade from your traditional equatorial mount, for instance, the Skywatcher EQ6R. The Wave 150i comes in at just 13.5 pounds. And to put that into perspective, the EQ6R mount head weighs in at 38 pounds. I know that I am much more likely to bring out the 13.5 150i every night over the Skywatcher EQ6R at 38 pounds every night. Continuing on, the 150i has a payload cap of 33 pounds without a counterweight and an impressive 55 pounds with a counterweight. This is 11 more pounds of payload than the EQ6R while weighing 25 pounds less. Now, the 150i cannot be equipped with dual saddles like the 100i can, but it does have a feature that the 100i does not. The 150i does have a declination saddle with both a USB port and two 2.5mm output ports for cable management. These are 2.5mm ports, not 2.1mm ports. So furthermore, on the RA axis, there is a power input for powering the mount itself and a power input for powering the deck hub, which is also a 2.5 millimeter port. You'll also find a USB port and an auxiliary port for computer control. So all of that being said, I'm gonna help you visualize in a little bit more detail what this all may look like. So this is how we set up the 150i for thorough testing. After assembling the 150i, we use the Aperture 12 volt 5 amp AC adapter to power the mount itself, and then a 12 volt 5 amp 2.5 millimeter barrel jack AC adapter to power the declination hub. Next, we used a 2.1 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter cable to power the camera from the USB hub. And from here, we used a standard USB-B cable to connect the camera to the RA housing. Now, if you want to control your entire system from the USB hub, then you will need a third-party USB-A to USB-A cable. And this cable does not come with the mount. So to hook this up properly, simply attach the USB-A cable from the camera to the deck hub, and then you'll need a USB-B cable to bridge the mount to the USB hub. Now, this method of control is going to prevent any cables from hanging down from the deck axis to the RA axis, so you're not gonna have any cable snags, but this method does require extra cables. For this video, we're going to be using the RA housing for the cleaner look. 
we've mounted the incredible Aperture Carbon Star 8RC on top of the Wave 150i, which all sits on the optional Skywatcher carbon fiber tripod, which is more than enough to handle this imaging system. We've opted not to use the optional peer extension because we're not going to have any trouble with the OTA coming into contact with the tripod legs. Now, like you would with any EQ mount, it's best to start your imaging session from the home position. If for some reason a problem arises with the 150i or the 100i in regards to the mount slewing in the wrong direction, we recommend stopping your imaging session and then manually pointing your mount and telescope in the home position. Once this has been done, turn off your mount, disconnect your computer or ASI Air, and then power the mount back on and then reconnect the computer. What this does is it reestablishes the home position and then from there you can just proceed as normal. Now what you've been waiting for, let's talk about performance. Luckily, we were able to spend several nights using both the 100i and the 150i throughout each night. Both mounts without counterweights were guiding at a consistent RMS error of 0.35 to 0.45 arc seconds, and on some occasions, all the way down to 0.25 arc seconds. And this is at 1625 millimeters focal length. This has been the most consistent of these strain wave mounts that we have put to the test here at High Point. And this is not surprising given Skywatcher's experience in developing highly reliable and consistent mounts. So, so far, all the testing that we did with the 100i and the 150i were heavily geared around astrophotography. We really wanted to see how well the mounts performed with a larger high focal length telescope. The one thing that we really have yet to talk about is the dual saddle for the 100i. Being that I was familiar with the weight capacity and the ability for the 100i to really handle the 8RC so well, I couldn't help myself. The next clear night, I attached two awesome visual scopes to the dual saddles on the 100i, the Aperture 6-inch Classical Cassegrain, and then the Aperture 90 APO. This was all controlled by the Skywatcher Wi-Fi app, and I wanted to visit some of my favorite objects and planets in alt as mode. There is a certain feeling that you get when doing visual astronomy that simply doesn't come with astrophotography, and it's really cool that the 100i does such a fantastic job at both. All right, so now that we are back in the studio and after having using these mounts for all things astronomy, it is incredible to think that I can put an 8RC on the 100i and get great results and then the next night go out and have an incredible visual experience. And this can be said for the 150i as well, but with an absolute massive payload to weight ratio. So yes, we absolutely recommend the Skywatcher Wave mounts for their build quality, their performance, their reliability, and Skywatcher's incredible US-based support. When it comes to strain wave mounts, it doesn't get much better than this. Now, we didn't spend all these nights testing and imaging outside without actually getting a photo. I was able to gather nearly 28 hours of data on the Wizard Nebula through the 8RC using the 2600MC Air. So yes, I was under Bortle 7 skies, but with a little bit of processing skills and some incredible equipment, there is no limit to what you can achieve. This is the Wizard Nebula.